Homekeeper. So glad to have you with us. I'm Martha Lane Rippey, drinking a nice hot cup of tea that uh, Susan made for me. Why don't you grab one? Stay with us. You will not regret sticking with us through this program. There are so many reasons that this is going to be a great program, but I think the number one reason is my guest, and he's a friend of many years, he and his wife, Mary Jo. And I'm talking about Reverend Dave Williams. Uh, he was a pastor for 30 years in uh, Lansing, Michigan, and he has a great work today just traveling and writing, and I am very happy to show you his brand new book that is making waves out there. It's called Hope in the Last Days. And let me tell you this, if prophecy confuses you and you just kind of can't get into it, you'll understand this book. I'm not kidding. It's the finest book on prophecy I have ever read in my life. It's got terms. It's got uh, the procession of things. And uh, Dave has put it in here, and I like the word at the top because it talks about hope. A lot of, a lot of ugly things are going to happen, you know, leading up to this. But in the Christian's heart, there's always hope because we know that Jesus is coming back. And uh, if you haven't met Dave Williams, I'm anxious for you to meet him. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make blueberry kujin. And I had to look that up. It's actually a German cake. And um, anything with blueberries, I'm in, okay? Uh, before I join Stephanie, though, we are viewer supported. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for every penny you send in here. We appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts and you can use your credit card or debit card with the 800 number that's coming up on your screen that's 1-800-229-0059 or the address there is home keepers box 6922 clearwater florida 33758 and i want to thank you in advance and after you hear uh, reverend williams um, you'll be thankful for a program like this and I pray the Lord will put it on your heart to support it. And now I've joined Stephanie, and there's a lot of ingredients here. There's a few. Sometimes but we yummy. have two or three. Right? <laughs> yeah. I love super simple recipes. And although there seems like there's a lot, this is a it's really not. easy one. Okay. What's my job? Okay. You're going to put together, you have sugar, flour, and butter. Put the sugar and the flour together first, and then you're just going to use a fork, and you're just going to... Um, make crumb. The reason I don't know anything about this is take this. We, this we usually get to get here pretty, we, you're a little ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And there was a big wreck on Omerton. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I found out about all about it. It was yeah, a bicycle I think there was that a got death. hit. Yes. Yeah. And I went into areas I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived here 40 she years. Got maybe a little misplaced this morning. Yeah. Huh? Did you say the flour and the butter? Nope, no, nope, flour and oh, sugar, sugar first, okay. mix them together, and then put the butter in and make crumbs. Okay. okay, I have flour, I have sugar, I have baking powder, I have salt, I have this nutmeg. This is from scratch. This is from scratch, which I love. I absolutely love. I have salt, nutmeg, I have the zest of a lemon. I hate to tell you how old I am, but I remember when there was nothing but scratch. I'm telling you, you couldn't <laughs> even guess how old she is. Trust me. Well, well we can have a contest. Let's. Okay, hundred bucks if you want it. Oh my, hundred dollars, thousand. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, whoever gets it right. Uh, You're giving them a hundred dollars? No, they oh. have to give us. Oh. <laughs> for the show, it's for the. I'm minute. sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> so confused. Um, anyway, back to the original thought. Okay, I have melted butter. Do you remember when Brooke was talking to us and she? She didn't know that there was any way to make a cake except a cake mix? Yes. Well, Brooke, she's in here right now. Brooke, I want you to know that I remember the day there were no cake mixes. <laughs> Melted butter. We did everything like this. Milk and an egg. I'm putting it all in the, dr the dry ingredients, and I'm going to mm -hmm. beat it up. Well, that makes me laugh. As she didn't know you can make things from As we're making this program, and we like to kind of mention that because sometimes, you know, they're re-aired and all. Um, kids are out of school. We're going into summer. Yeah. It's, we're going into Vacations. June. And I'll tell you this. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer at Christmas, I didn't know how long it, it would be going on. I thought for sure I'd still be dealing. But I'm healed. I'm whole. Amen. It's all taken care of. So God is so good. Amen. The only downside is she does her Christmas shopping in January, and I don't think you've started yet. I haven't started yet, but yeah. that's okay. That's okay. 
I saw something. You're doing a good job. Yeah, somebody on Facebook went to this flea market. Mm -hmm. and it was so big. Thought you could do all your Christmas shopping there in one day. That would be fun. What do you need? Do you need a Okay, pan? yes, right behind me. Okay. Uh, Put that oh, it's a there. big one. Okay, yes. I'll. I'll spray okay, it. so we have blueberries, and then the topping was flour, sugar, and melted butter that you made into a crumb. Mm -hmm. You did a great Crumble job. It. Let me clean up your mess I think here. this would be a good one for you ladies when you have brunch and you oh have friends gosh, over. So good. So you Get simply scrape here. what I made out into the pan. That earthling so nicely sprayed over the sink. Mm -hmm. Safety first. If I don't do it over the sink, she really gets. I don't want anyone to get hurt because inevitably it'll be me who falls. So <laughs> look so, at this. You spread this out. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna put the blueberries on top. Then the crumble, crumble on top of that, and then you bake it. Uh huh. For three uh, for 40 minutes at 350 degrees. But you're gonna have to want you're gonna want to get the recipe because I didn't give all. The yeah. Amount. Oh, and look there how too gorgeous many. that is. It's gorgeous, and the lemon smells divine. It, can you smell the lemon? Okay, I was busy. Would you put lemon juice or peel Zest. or what? Zest. Zest, okay. Yes, you were busy talking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have it spread out in the 13 by 9 pan. I'm going to put blueberries over the top of it. Do you know that blueberries are brain food? They are. They're so good for you. I put, them in, so um, I put them in a shake in the morning. Oh, my. There's lots of stems. Little. St Those are the prize. <laughs> Ah, uh, oh my, oh my. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's spread this out. This one's still hot too. Oh, nice. Mm. And then the crumb goes over it. That's all there is to it. That's it. And it's from scratch. I would say made with love. On a <laughs> on a scale from one to ten, I would call this an eleven. All right. You got to take a little taste. A little. Look at that big old the big blueberry old uh, taste blueberry right, right there. there. Yep. Maybe a little more feminine than I've been in the past. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Mm. There we go. That's hot. All right, it is called a uh, blueberry kuchen. It's spelled K U C H E N. We're going to call it kuchen. <laughs> no, I looked it up. Is it kuchen? Kuchen. Like a G? What does it mean? I don't know. It, it's a German K. If you look it up, you should know what it means. <laughs> I just want to know how to pronounce it okay. so that they would think I was really smart. I'll say sorry, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you say, well, we got other blueberry recipes. Yeah, so if, if you can put Kujin and spell it any way you want, uh, we'll send it to you. Email's the best. But um, if you write to us, send us an envelope with your name and a stamp on it, and we'll get it right out to you. Uh, you're going to love this one. We certainly mm. endorse it. Stay with me. If you have not met uh, Pastor Dave Williams, you're going to love him, okay? If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may send your email request to artheline at rippy.org, or you may write to us at the address on your screen, and in doing so, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope. We thank you for being a part of our Homekeepers family. to have a good friend here and his wife is in the studio as well but let me tell you a few statistics he's a best-selling author more than 60 books he's written pastor this i met him in lansing michigan several years ago when he was the pastor of mount hope church i love that place dave you drive down there on all these missionary flags loved it okay get this um he was there 30 years 500 daughter churches around the world and uh, there are other Mount Hope baby churches, right, in Michigan. And also in uh, that time, more than $40 million given to the cause of Christ. Missions. I love those. I love those Thank kind you. of statistics. Welcome. Welcome back Thank to Home Thank you, Arlene. Thanks for having me on. Uh-huh. Yeah. You've been a blessing to the Christian community for so many oh, years. Oh, thank you. You are a treasure to the body of Christ, Arlene. Well, thank you. That's and you blessed kind. us in Lansing many times. I loved going there. Um, I don't know. I think you and I were on the same board, and that we that's yes, where we, we met. And yeah. I think our spirits just kind of connected. The Lord does that, doesn't He? He does. We're going to talk about the newest book, 
hope in the last days. And sometimes uh, people think of prophecy and they fog over, you know, it's too hard. And um, yet this book, you've really made it clear, precise, and I just want to congratulate you on it. Thank you. I was on with uh, Rabbi Eric Walker, who's a born again oh, yeah. rabbi. He's been here. He's been here? Yeah. He said at the end of the program, he said, uh, and this honored me, he said, you don't need any other prophecy book. He said, get this one, and it's the only one you need right with your Bible. Listen, for him to say that is really, really powerful. Why, uh, with all the other books you've written, why did you decide to write one on prophecy? I did a seminar on understanding the end times, and somehow Charisma House got a hold of that and called and asked if I would write a book, and they gave it the title, Hope in the Last Days. And so we put all my messages together that were on prophecy, because I taught on prophecy quite a bit. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I met Jesus in Daniel chapter 2. That's where I oh, met really? him. Yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, which was a prophetic sermon about the succession of world powers that, that would be. And um, but let me stop you there. Is that where you became a Christian? Yes, Daniel. Chapter and Daniel, two. usually it's John three sixteen. <laughs> I mean, Daniel's got a lot <laughs> of stuff in there. <laughs> well, you know where I was. I was at Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa in With Chuck the, Smith. Chuck Smith in the earlier years. In, in the tent. Mm -hmm. And I went in and people were saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And I thought, what kind of a cult have these guys <laughs> brought me to? Some of my friends took me. And Chuck got up and he preached verse by verse, taught verse by yeah. verse in Daniel chapter 2 of the succeeding kingdoms. And then he said, there, this stone not cut with human hands comes down and crushes the feet of the image and the whole image of human history drifts off into the air and that little stone becomes a mountain. He said, that's Jesus, God's son, and his kingdom is going to reign forever and ever. And he gave an altar call and I raised my hand. You would have thought I caught a football. Uh -huh. People started tackling me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you're one, the very, very few who find salvation, you know, going through the book of Daniel. But um, you didn't, were you raised up in a church? Because if was. I remember your story that were you on the ship or something, these guys are going around like this all the time. You thought they were nuts and, yeah. and they were going, Jesus is Lord, you know. That's right. And that, that's what piqued your interest. Well, I had orthodoxy. I believed all the right things. Uh, I was raised in a church, and so I believed in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Blessed Virgin, lived a sinless life, died vicariously for mm -hmm. the sin of the world, rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, was coming back to judge the living and the dead. Of course, I believed that. But my orthopraxy was totally different. Orthopraxy is correct practice. Orthodoxy is correct doctrine. And even though I believed the right things, if I would have died... I would have gone to the regions of the damned mm -hmm. because I had never been born again. Yeah. There are people that have orthopraxy. They believe you must be born again, but they've never been born mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. They don't have the orthopraxy. Christianity is a two-legged. You have to have right believing and right practice. Mm -hmm. And so that's what led you to Chuck, Chuck Smith, which was... A great place to go. I mean, you oh, would get was. Bible teaching there. Just Back then, the every night yeah. we had Bible studies. And Chuck would teach verse by verse, and quite often he would teach on prophecy. And I believe it was Dr. Jeremiah, David Jeremiah, said that the churches that are teaching prophecy today are the growing churches because mm -hmm. there's an innate hunger mm -hmm. in each person to know the future. And we have yeah. a sure word of the future. Absolutely. Um, my brother-in-law, who's in heaven, David Crabtree, um, when he would get in a series of uh, prophecy in his church in Des Moines, Iowa, crowds were huge. Yep. Dan Betzer, yes. First Assembly in Fort Myers, he preaches on prophecy. I mean, he'll, it's a big church, but he'll have a full house on Wednesday night. Sure. You know, uh, people want to hear it. Do you think some, maybe some pastor speakers are a little afraid of it? Well, they are. Number one, they're afraid I don't understand it well yeah. enough and I want to be sure I get it right. right. 
And I tell them, you know, back in 1971, I'm sure Chuck Smith didn't have it 100% right, but he had it right enough to bring in mm -hmm. thousands of people into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that are, are still sealed up a little bit, and we're going to mm -hmm. get more revelation as we go on. Mm -hmm. And some pastors feel that it's going to bring division because <laughs> people have different thoughts about prophecy, and it should never bring oh. division. It should be points of discussion. Yeah, lively debate. Lively debates among true born-again believers. Yeah, you got post-trib, pre-trib. Uh, Post-trib, pre-trib, mid-trib, uh, <laughs> pre-wrath, partial rapture. You've got all those yeah. going on. Yeah, and I think that uh, makes it interesting. Uh, but you say it's more than about the future. It's about your family. Yes. And your, and your future. And I never thought of it in those terms, but you're absolutely right. It needs to be personalized. It has to be personalized. It's... Now is the most important time to come to Jesus. I, it was Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. He said, mm -hmm. I heard it impassionately. He says, if you're not right with God, now's the time to get right Better. with God. If you're not born again, now's the time to get born again. Why? Because Jesus said, when you see all these things begin to come to pass, lift up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. And he said, this generation will not pass before all these things be fulfilled. And so the generation that sees all these converging signs, these preview signs, these some harbingers coming together, mm -hmm. he said, you will be the final generation. And every indication, Arthleen, is that we very well could be the final generation, so. the generation that sees Jesus come mm -hmm. for his church. Mm -hmm. If you just tuned in, I'm talking to Reverend uh, Dave Williams. We are talking about this wonderful book that is really getting some traction here. Uh, Hope in the Last Day, we've got the website up. You can get it through that or I'm sure Amazon and all those good places. Barnes & Noble, Books uh, and Land. Yeah, have Hope in the Last Days. Um, David is just, you're just kind of getting to the grandchild thing. I'm so far ahead of you. I mean, you are in the dust, but you have three. Yes. Uh, and um, I have five grandchildren and eight great grandchildren. So wow. don't say anything. I just, I know for you. being 50 years old. <laughs> I know it. How do you have great grandchildren? Now, I said all this, that to say this. Uh, when I was growing up in Sunday school, there was nothing technical. You might not even remember this, but the flannel graph. Yeah, oh, I remember those. And uh, the things would come out from the headquarters of whatever your denomination was, and you cut them out and put them on the flannel graph. And it was, it's still with me, so it was effective. And, and there were words in there, and, and it, like Israel and like Palestine. And they were only in the Bible then. Now they're in the news every single night. Everything that was in that little Sunday school class, I'm living it now. You're living it. Yeah, it's right. When Jesus said, when these things begin to come to pass, I think we're a little bit past the beginning thing. We are. We're heading to the finish line right now. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I give a chronology that is approximate of the events that will be taking place shortly. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so fascinating. Name some of them for us. Well, um, I named 15 things to look for in the final hours, but there are a couple of things that really bring interest now. Syria, mm -hmm. the Magog nations, yeah. uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, mm -hmm. it tells us clearly that Russia will be aligning with key Muslim nations yeah. to make an invasion of Israel, and what does it say? In the latter days, mm -hmm. in the last days, Russia, Iran, which is ancient Persia, Libya, mm -hmm. and some others are gonna make an invasion on Israel. It's gonna go terribly wrong for them. It's mm -hmm. gonna fail. But prior to that, there are three prophecies that have not yet been fulfilled. One is the destruction of Damascus, but it's right on the way. Isaiah 17 says that Damascus will become a heap of ruins. Well, look it. It was 1.7 million people population in Damascus, Syria. And now it's down to half that because people have fled for their lives with this 
civil war, ISIS, the rebels, the government, all against each other. Mm -hmm. a, a, a kingdom divided mm -hmm. can't stand. And Bashar Assad, El Assad, the president mm -hmm. of Syria, wants the Golan Heights back because there was one of the largest natural gas lines found in the Golan Heights and he said we want it back and Netanyahu I've never heard him like this before he said something like this and I'm paraphrasing but he said if you send one missile into Israel Damascus will become a heap of ruins there so you've is. got the Damascus prophecy then the Psalm 83 prophecies I was doing a prophecy seminar in a large church and somebody asked me what about Psalm 83 and I thought it was just an imprecatory prayer. It's a psalm of Asaph. And I found out Asaph was a respected prophet and seer. He was a singer, a recorder, he wrote psalms, but he also was a prophet. And he lists all these groups that describe today's location with ancient, with the ancient uh, locations that ASAP describes mm -hmm. are the exact locations of all the terrorist groups around Israel really? today and they're going to be wiped out. Uh, it, something is going to happen whether it's Israel, the United States or just a miracle mm -hmm. of God but that could precipitate the Ezekiel 38 and 39 mm -hmm. invasion with Russia, Iran, Libya, Sudan, and ancient Ethiopia, which is Sudan today, uh, in an invasion on Israel, Israel to take a spoil. They want Israel's wealth. And, it's in the newspaper every night. And then the other one is Jeremiah 49 talks about the destruction of Elam. Well, where's Elam? You, you do a little research. And I'm this great researcher named Bill Salas. I hope he can be on your program sometime out in La Quinta, California. He's the most dedicated researcher I've ever known. He found out Elam is located in southwestern Iran at the exact location where Iran built their largest nuclear power plant wow. and then found out it was built on three tectonic plates, earthquake zones. Uh -huh. And so if that... Uh, if that goes, there's going to be a disaster. And the Christians in Iran are excited about it because it says they're going to be able to spread out. The people of Iran are going to leave their country because of this disaster. And they're excited because they want to share Jesus with other nations. I know. And you uh, hear these uh, atrocities going on. And, but yet they, I've read that there are hundreds and thousands of Islamists accepting the Lord Jesus. Muslims are. Yeah. That's right. Uh, two million a year are coming to Christ in Indonesia right now. Uh, one of the largest countries. And isn't Indonesia the largest, the largest, largest Muslim nation yeah. in the world? And two million a year are coming to Christ now. In Iran, Iran is one of the top ten nations where people are turning to Jesus Christ. And uh, our pastor, who took the church I pastored uh -huh. visited the refugee camps over there mm -hmm. and these refugees are turning to Christ. They are so tired of what's going on in their religion. Mm -hmm. They're turning to Christ in massive numbers. That's because exciting. Because he said this gospel shall be preached to all nations. All nations. And then the end and uh, Dave I've, I've heard recently of little technical things that you can put in another technical thing uh, where so much of the world is illiterate, but they can record the gospel in that language and send it out there. And people, I mean, it is being preached. Technology is a, a big part of this gospel being preached. It is. And they, they're even providing these hand crank self-powered uh, message you, you, you crank them up and, and the message goes until you need to crank it up you don't need batteries or anything uh, we get so and Christians are probably as guilty as anyone else we get so concerned with what's going on here and what's this personality doing and presidents tweeting this <laughs> and all these things going on uh, that maybe Satan's been successful in, in dulling our interest 
that we are sitting on just on the precipice for the greatest event to ever take place in all of humankind. You're right, Arthleen. Something dramatic, global, irreversible, and sudden is going to happen one of these days. It could be any day now, mm -hmm. and there's no turning back after that happens. It's going to be dramatic, and I, I believe God is in his final roundup right now. We talk about Acts 2, Peter said, In the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, saith mm -hmm. the Lord. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, so forth. When Joel gave that prophecy, he used the word afterwards. So that mm -hmm. referred to Pentecost, and Peter mm -hmm. took that prophecy and made it into another prophecy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're seeing that happen mm -hmm. all over the world. Cuba had, what was it? It had 10 assemblies of God churches. 30 years ago, now there are 10,000 churches in Cuba. That's just the Assemblies of God. Yeah, and we keep hearing of the, the revival in Cuba. And I have a friend that has, uh, you know, sneaked Bibles here and there in North Korea and places like that. But you hear these house churches and they look at Americans and they say, we don't want to be like that. They look at American Christians and say, you know, you're interested in, in wealth and you're interested in this, you're interested in material things. They don't want it. Their hearts are, they are looking up. Well, uh, I, I do think we need to be interested in wealth for oh, the yeah, sake of... to get it out. <laughs> Home keepers, <laughs> sake yeah. of CTN, the, you know, the ta uh, so that we can be generous with ministries that are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you're right, if it's me, me, me. Yeah, it's all about me. We are, we are just about out of time, but let me remind you, the website has been up all the time. Uh, the book is called Hope in the Last Days. And as I've mentioned a couple of times, uh, I am not a prophecy expert at all. I probably know as much as I should as I've known the Lord as long as I have. But this one, this one really, when I was going through it, it, it just came alive to me. And I'm so thankful that it's here because it's now. This book is happening right now. It's on your nightly news right now. And you know what they're saying? Jesus is coming. This happened today. You know what it says to the Christian? Jesus is coming. Well, hey, stay be sure you join me next time, and remember, there is no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.